Nancy, you may clear out the rear attic room and make up the bed. My niece, Miss Pollyanna Whittier, is coming to live with me. She is 11 and will sleep in that room. Pollyanna. What a ridiculous name. A little girl coming to stay. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? No, it won't be nice. Pollyanna. Welcome. I'm so glad to see you. I've been wondering all the way what you'd look like, and I'm very pleased, Aunt Polly. Oh, I'm not Aunt Polly. Your aunt wanted to come, but she had, um, some urgent reading to do at home. I'm Nancy, her maid. Oh. Is she like you? Um, not really, no. Do you like this dress? I should be wearing a black dress now that Father's gone to heaven to be with Mother and the angels and, you know, God. But the lady's aide, that's the lady who've been looking after me, can find me one. Who are you? Me? Oh, well, I'm the handyman, Tim. And my father's the gardener, Tom. Do you, uh, do you want to know something, Miss Pollyanna? Yes, yes, I do. Well, in ten years' time, we'll all be driving motor cars. Walk on. Is my Aunt Polly rich? Yes, she is, miss. Must be lovely to have lots of money. Does Aunt Polly eat ice cream every day? <laughs> no. Why not? She doesn't like it. I have to warn you, you may find your aunt a little strict. I've only been with her for a matter of weeks. Sometimes... Well, she's hard to please. Do you know, she's my only living relative now. I'm so lucky she wants to look after me. Pollyanna, Mom. How do you do, Pollyanna? Oh, I... Polly, thank you so much for taking me in. I'm not much to look at. It's the freckles. As soon as they went there. Although Father says they're beautiful, like blossom on a lawn.
I just love your house. If I had a house like this, I'd invite everyone over for sandwiches every day. Father always says, said... I have no interest in what your father said. Will you follow me to your room? Pollyanna? I believe you have everything you need here. Supper is at six o'clock. A bell will be rung. Be where you can hear it. Settling in. How do you feel stuck in an attic when there's a dozen rooms going begging? That'd be something. See Miss Jenny's girl. Who's Miss Jenny? Miss Polly's sister. They fell out when Miss Jenny ran off with Pollyanna's father. Ran off? No, I'd run off if I had a sister like Miss Polly. I'll go to Timbuk too, wherever that is. You're not so fond of her then? As if anyone could be. You don't know about Miss Polly's love affair, then? Somebody loved Miss Polly? Who? Ah, it's not my place to see. Couldn't he find someone more worthwhile to love? Miss Polly was quite a beauty once. Still could be if she stopped trying to look like a nun. <laughs> no, no, it was the affair that made her sour and prickly. She was all right before that. Well, there's no pleasing her now, that's for sure. You're early, Pollyanna. I said six o'clock. Hey. Oh, Timothy, come in. Mum. Uh, I've, uh, I've, I've come to ask you again if you've had time to consider the question of purchasing a motor car. Mrs Minklin's still selling hers. I remain unpersuaded that a motorised vehicle is anything other than an unnecessary expense. What? Do we really need one? Well, I, I was just telling your lovely Pollyanna. She's not mine. She's my late sister's. I have accepted her here because it is my duty. Yes. Anyhow, I was just telling her that the motor car is the future. I seem to remember you once telling me the Titanic was the future. You get fewer flies in cars. You're moving too fast, they can't keep up. In that case, you'd better arrange to buy one.
Nancy, my niece is late. I told her what time supper was, and now she must face the consequences. When she comes down, she may have bread and milk in the kitchen. Yes, ma'am. see you. How did you get out here? Climbed out of my window. What a scare you gave me. Oh, don't worry about me. Mother used to, then father. But they stopped when they realised I always came back safely. In the end, it was them who didn't come back. Um, your aunt's cross because you didn't come down for supper. She said you'll have to have bread and milk. Oh, I'm glad. I like bread and milk. That'll come in useful here, you being so good at being glad. Well, that's the game, you know. What game? Glad game. Father taught me it. What is it? It started when I wanted a doll, and Father had written asking for one for the charity people. But when it came, there were just some crutches. Crutches? Yes, you know. And the game is to find something to be glad about and everything. How can you be glad about getting crutches if you wanted a doll? Aha! Uh -huh. You're glad because you don't need them. <laughs> I couldn't see it first. Father had to tell me. I've played it ever since. <laughs> Have you had your supper, Pollyanna? Yes, Aunt. I'm sorry I was obliged to send you to the kitchen to have bread and milk. No, I was glad you did. Don't feel bad about it. Good. Who let those flies in? I'm sorry, Mum. That must have been me. No, it was me. There were lots of them outside my window when I opened it. You opened a window? It is your duty not to let flies into this house. My duty? I'm sorry, but it was a little hot. Flies are not only unclean and annoying, they are also a danger to the health. I have a pamphlet for you to read. Nancy, fetch me the fly pamphlet. Yes, Mum. Something to read? Oh, thank you, Aunt Polly. I love to read. My father waits. Pollyanna, there is one thing you should understand now. I do not wish to hear you mention your father again, ever. But I have to. I think about him all the time. You will not refer to him again. Now you may go to bed. Signs of affection to be kept to the barest minimum. Now, please do take your seat. They have this special tube, look, that dissolves the food. I'm not making this up. Then sucks it into its mouth. That is enough on the subject of flies. Thank you very much, Pollyanna. I wish to eat. We need to go to the village this morning to buy you some proper clothes. And tomorrow you should commence a routine. My father always said routine. Your day will consist of reading aloud to me for one hour after breakfast, then rigidly monitored private study until midday, after lunch, sewing with me, cookery instruction with Nancy, 
then an orderly walk. Music, tidying, supper, then bed. When do I just live? What? I know I'll be breathing, but that's not the same as living. You'll be allowed brief intervals in which to play. Let us know he's not happy. Miss Miss on the gardener. Hey, so like your mother. I knew when she was even a littler than you are now. You knew my mother? Yeah. I never really knew her. What was she like? She broke a few hearts, I can tell you. <laughs> Men have fallen all over themselves to get into her good books. Yeah. When she went away from me, it was like, like someone had turned out after lights. Aye. Uh, your daddy being a vicar without chucks. Miss Polly and the family didn't think he was the right person for the likes of your mother. Father was never very good with money. He always said we should pay with flowers and butterflies instead of coins. Oh, how would that work, then? Oh, well, first father said everyone should have enough garden to grow their own flowers. And then there would be more flowers to attract the butterflies. Oh, yeah. So the fuel is supplied by the carburettor to the compression chamber here at the top of the cylinder block. Now, this is when the plugs I was talking about come into play. Now it gets even more interesting. The spark... We, the spark... Uh, the spark which is created by this fella here... I think something's burning.
Here she is. I found her. <laughs> Evening. <laughs> You're letting the flies in. Absolutely extraordinary behaviour. For the rest of the night, Pollyanna, you're to sleep in my bed with me, or I know where you are. With you? Oh, Aunt Polly, how perfectly lovely of you. Thank you. No, this is a punishment. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it really isn't. Oh. <laughs> Just a bit of oil. <laughs> Good afternoon. You're not expecting to keep that. How do you do? I'm from Miss Polly Harrington, and I'd like to see Mrs Snow, please. Good luck. Not well. I'll have it how I like. My name's Pollyanna. My Aunt Polly says she hopes you're comfortable this week. She sent you some castor jelly, which is supposed to be good for sick people. I don't know why. Jelly? I'd rather have lamb broth, but never mind. Yes, they said you're the kind of person who always wants the thing they're not given. What did you say? I'm sorry you're not well. Do you know how many winks of sleep I got last night? Three? None. I didn't sleep a wink. You are so lucky. What? I always think we lose so much time sleeping when we might be doing things. <sighs> Open the curtains. I want to see you. Oh dear, now you can see my freckles. I love your black hair. I would have been so glad to have had black hair. You'd be glad of anything if you had to lie in bed all day like I do. Well, there's always something to be glad about. Really? What should I be glad about? Uh, this will be a hard one. <laughs> I have to go now. May I think about that and tell you next week? I've had such a lovely time. Did she let you open the curtain? No, oh, why not, Millie? I don't have to stay in the dark just because I'm poorly, do I? you do again? Isn't it a lovely day? I suggest you find someone of your own age to talk to. I'd like to, but there aren't any around here. Don't worry, I like your old people too. Thank you. I'm used to the elderly ladies from the Ladies' Aid. 
They kindly looked after me and father couldn't cope. <sighs> well, that's... nice. Yes, Miss White, she's the nicest. She had a bush in her garden shaped like a peacock. She fell out with Mrs. Rawson, who said she was a very ordinary woman, which put the cat among the pigeons. Mrs. Jones had just lost her husband, so she tended to hit people with her stick. What's your favourite smell? Goodbye. He said hello to you. I had to sort of coax it out of him. He's a bit like Mrs. Snow, only walking. <laughs> Mr. Pendleton doesn't speak to anyone. He lives all alone in a great big lovely house full of grand things, they say. Some say he's crazy or just really cross. Some say he's got a skeleton in his cupboard. Oh, how horrible. <laughs> he travels all over the world and when he comes back he writes odd books and never spends any money. Even though he's so rich, he could eat gold coins from morning till night if he really wanted to. <laughs> Pollyanna, you're late for your sewing lesson. In fact, you seem to be completely ignoring the timetable I set out for you. That's true, and I'm sorry. But I promise you, I'm learning things all the time. He absolutely promised that. Did you sit in your room and memorise a poem before breakfast, as I asked? No. Why not? I don't have a chair. Oh, it's such a lovely room. Thank you. Lamb's broth. Mm, I was in the mood for something else. Carl's foot jelly. Chicken broth. That's what I'd really like. Oh, Mrs. Snow, I was thinking about what you can be glad about, and I thought of something. You can be happy that other people aren't like you, sick in bed like this. I think you should leave. Pollyanna, we are not taking in a stray dog. Oh, please. He won't be any trouble. It's an unnecessary expense. We can sell the piano. Nobody ever plays it, except that nice blind man who comes and tests it. What possible use is a dog? They make you glad to be alive. That's got to be good, hasn't it? Extraordinary child. What makes you glad, Aunt Polly? I don't consider it important to be glad. Oh, well, I don't see how you play the game, then. What game? Oh, Father taught me... nothing. Go and wash your hands. Anyway, thank you for letting me keep the dog. What? See that, uh, see that drop arm? She's pulling to the left. Timothy? Hmm? Do you like Nancy? Uh, yes, uh, she's a fine girl. Very fine. I think she likes you, too. You know you're always talking to Nancy about the motor car? Yes, these are exciting times from mechanical engineering. I think you should talk to her about other things, like herself. Yes? In fact, anything apart from motor cars. Now, 
you go up to her as bold as brass. Don't just stand there like a fish at a bar dance. Ooh. I used to pick those for your mum. Brought tears to her eyes. Maybe that was just the hay for eh? Good luck. You said I didn't need it. Go on. in the mood for calves foot jelly either. Chicken broth. Oh, very kind of you, but... <sighs> Mutton broth. Oxtail. Pea soup. There, you must like one of these. coming to the village, but it rains a lot, so nobody can go. What is there to be glad about? I would be glad because everyone else was getting wet, except me, because I was confined to bed. Well, that's not playing the game, right? Oh, um, I would be glad because... Oh, let me think. The next time the fair came, everyone would enjoy it that much more because they hadn't been able to go the last time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, this is a, a silly game. Let's have another one. Right, now you lose a shoe on the way back from church. This happened to me too. What is there to be glad about? Um... Hello. Hello yourself. My name's Pollyanna Whittier. What's yours? Jimmy Bean. Like the vegetable? Yeah. You don't see many boys and girls my age. Where do you live? In the orphanage. Except I've left because it was full. They didn't want me anyhow. Well, that's terrible. I've been going round houses, asking if anyone wants me. But everyone that wants kids has already got them. His mother and father's up in heaven, like mine, so he's got nobody. And he's been going from house to house because the orphanage is bursting with children. So I said you'd take him in, the way he took me in and my cat and my dog. Although they have to sleep outside. I'm still not sure why. Don't be ridiculous. The idea of me taking in this dirty little boy. But he wants a home and people. And I said how good you were to me. Enough. Mangy cats and dogs were one thing. I'm not looking after this ragged little beggar off the streets. I'm not a beggar, Mum. I work for my keep. I wouldn't have come here if this girl hadn't have told me that you were good and kind. Oh, Aunt Polly, I thought you'd be glad to have him here. I know I'd be glad. Polly, Anna. Will you stop using that everlasting word, glad, from morning till night? <sighs> Jimmy! Jimmy! I'm sorry. I'm not blaming it on you, it's her. No, Auntie's a good person. I must have just explained it wrong. Wait, I thought of something. The ladies aid me tomorrow. I heard Aunt Polly say so. I explained to them that you're needy. Father always did that whenever he wanted anything. Money to educate the heathen or new carpets. Well, I'm not a heathen or a new carpet. 
What's a ladies' aid? Don't you know anything? It's just a lot of ladies that meet and sew and sit in clouds of perfume and raise money. They're awfully kind. Oh, no. I'm not standing around anymore getting called a beggar by old ladies. You don't have to be there. I'll go and tell them. Please, I know someone there will give you a home. Shillings. I need guineas, not shillings. Well, the roof will not mend itself. The mission in Bombay is in a delicate state. Funds are urgently needed. The weather vane is creaking so badly it can be heard halfway across the common. A big ladder is needed for access to the crypt. Oh, ladies! It really is the might I am. Excuse me? Strong winds. You can't hear yourself think. Why are you so obsessed with this weather vane? Oh, it's all roof, roof, roof with you. Well, you I might I speak? <laughs> Did your aunt send you, my dear? No, I came all by myself. I'm used to you nice charity ladies from needing help myself. Anyway, I've come about a friend of mine, Jimmy Bean. He's nearly 11 and he's all alone, and he needs someone to take him in and show him that the world's a good place to be born into. Jimmy who? One well, of you nice rich ladies must have a home for Jimmy, or can look after him until he finds one. He's keen to work. Perhaps we might assume his support and education. Hmm? How did he get into such a ruinous position? It's not his fault. He's done his best There's to... There's no smoke without fire. Mm. Very yes. true. What are you talking about? Jimmy's more important than a big ladder. <laughs> Does he not know that we already have a great many calls on our funds? Cake? Tindica? Tea. didn't really listen. Not properly. Doesn't matter. Maybe I didn't want to live in a house. It's not as good as people make out. Won't you not be cross, not knowing where you are? Yeah, she'll be cross. Only on the outside. No, she's cross all the way through. Anyway, you slice her up. That's not true. She's just like an old nut. You're right there. No, I mean, you just need to find a way to crack open the shell and... The goodness is waiting inside. Don't write to me. I shall not answer you, Gertrude declared. I should, of course, burn your letters, said Felix. Gertrude looked at him again. Burn my letters? Good evening, Nancy. Hello. Oh, thank you. Sweets. <laughs> I thought giving you enough flowers. <laughs> uh, yes. I saw they were piling up there in your room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. No, don't do that. Sorry. No, I mean, you can, but not yet. You're kneeling in some nettles. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's not part of a motor car, is it? No. No. Nancy. Will you do me the honour of being my wife? I'll think about it. Are you hurt? 
No, I'm taking a siesta. Child, I need your help. Are you sensible? Yes. Are you? <sighs> Run to my house. Five minutes that way. Let yourself in. <sighs> in the room ahead of you, there's a telephone. Can you use the telephone? Yes. <sighs> Look for Dr. Chilton's number. On the card you'll find on the table there. Telephone him, said John Pendleton is lying at the foot of Raven Ledge in Pendleton Woods with a broken leg. Broken? Oh, you poor thing, is there anything? Go! He's on his way. Oh, your head shouldn't be on the hard ground. I'm not good company. Oh, you're in pain. No. I'm never good company. No, you're just a little cross. I mean, on the outside. Lots of people are. They don't do it on purpose, they just sort of fall into it. Here they are, over here. Down on the near side, if I was you. That's it. Well done. You've done very well. I'm Dr. Chilton. There are two doctors in this village. I'm the good one. Fortunately, I'm not competitive. Hello, I'm Pollyanna. This is Polly Harrington's niece. Be comfortable in a minute, sir. You've been very helpful. You must come and look after me if ever I'm ill. Strife, grief, disappointment, and frustration are. Part and parcel of our daily life, of course. But I sometimes wonder if, if we're honest with ourselves, and we should be, if we can't all try that little bit harder to be nice to one another. I'm reminded of my Uncle Percy, who <laughs> summed it up rather well when, on a uh, walking holiday, I think it was, at Didn't any they rate, ask on, me to on marry a holiday him? of some sort in Scotland. And he <laughs> came across a man he described as the most unpleasant man he had ever met. I told him I'll think Why about it. You, you have to make them wait. I read it in a book. My <laughs> uncle asked. <laughs> because people find me rude and are unkind to me. But Polly? Hmm? Would you mind if I took half sweet jelly to another invalid instead of Mrs Snow? Why? Because she hasn't got a broken leg which will get better, so I can always take her things. Broken leg? What are you talking about, Pollyanna? Oh, I didn't tell you. I was a bit sad about Jimmy Bean, but I found Mr Pendleton in the woods... Pendleton? I'll go and get the jelly. No, you most certainly may not take anything to Mr Pendleton. You mustn't not like him. He's only cross on the outside. Yes, I know your views very well on that subject, Pollyanna. I wouldn't say you sent it. 
Does he know you are my niece? No, I don't think so. Very well. You may take the jelly to Mr Pendleton, but make sure he understands that it is your gift. I did not send it. Good afternoon. I've brought some cartridge jelly for Mr Pendleton. Everyone says it's good for sick people, so I suppose it must be. Thank you. Who shall I say sent it? Hello. That's very kind of you. Would you like to see your patient? Oh, yes, please. Dr Chilton, Mr Pendleton gave orders not to admit anyone. Mr Pendleton is dyspeptic, or to use the proper medical term, grumpy. He needs cheering up. Are you going to do it? No. Well, Pollyanna here is. I keep hearing about you, Pollyanna. You managed to cheer Mrs. Snow up, another of my less giggly patients. What's your secret? I suppose I just think it's as easy to be happy about things as not to be. I said I don't want to see... <clears throat> it's you. I wanted to find out how you are. Uh. I'll give you this. You might be glad that you only broke one leg. Well, perhaps you'd like me to be glad I'm not a centipede or I'd have broken 50. Oh, that's good. That's very good. My house is overrun with do-gooders puffing up pillows, cleaning up all my dust. You are so grumpy. <laughs> I think I'm made of money. What's he saving it for? I don't know yet. Well, Polly's rich too. Though not as rich as you. She might have been, but she's bought some expensive hats. Aunt Polly. Miss Polly Harrington. I live with her. I didn't think she was the living with kind. Well, my mother was her sister, and after father went to join her in heaven, there was nobody to look after me. So you are Miss Polly Harrington's niece. I suppose you know her. Oh, yes. I know her. You don't mean it was Miss Harrington that sent me the cow's foot jelly? Oh, no, she didn't. She said you must be sure to know that it wasn't her who sent it. I'd better go now. Don't forget to eat your jelly. Do your hair nicely. <sighs> Sit down. Sit down right here. There's so much of it. You're going to surprise people so much when they see you. What's this I hear about you disrupting a meeting of the ladies' aid with talk of that beggar boy? I know, but I didn't understand when I went that they needed the money for other things, like the foreign heathen and the ladder. But I haven't given up because I keep thinking about Jimmy and... he looks so lovely. Wait, I haven't finished. Peak. 
Pollyanna, what are you doing? Come with me. Open your eyes. Is that your aunt I saw rushing away? Yes. She doesn't like to be seen looking nice. I have a favour to ask you. I've prescribed you for a patient, Mr Pendleton. Will you visit him again? I'd love to. He's been in a bad mood again. Sadness is a poor healer. I don't suppose you ever get ill, do you, Pollyanna? No, I don't. Cicenius! <laughs> Come, Cicenius! <laughs> We're going to get married! <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! Good morning. Morning. I must apologize for being rude the last time and the time before that. And the time before that. And the time before that, out walking. You're very forgiving for coming. Please. So, what do you like doing? Everything. Everything? First rate. And I didn't mean to be rude the other day when I said Aunt Polly didn't send the jelly. Well, this won't do. I didn't send for you to see me mopping. Open that box over there. It's things I've picked up on my travels. I spend half the year travelling. I'm thinking I should settle down. Nothing worse than the elderly abroad losing their luggage. Falling over, getting in and out of boats. Jimmy would love that. Oh, look at this. What's happening? It's like a rainbow. It's called a prism. Catches the light. It is so lovely. If you really want to live in a rainbow, there's no reason why you shouldn't. I think this would make even Aunt Polly glad. <laughs> well, unfortunately, you can't teach someone to be glad, least of all your Aunt Polly. Little girl, I thought, after I found out who you were, that I didn't want you to come and see me again. You reminded me of something I've tried for long years to forget, but I missed you. Now I want you to come and see me often. Will you? That's it! That's it! It's so exciting! It was after Mr Pendleton found out that you were Miss Polly's niece that he went all grumpy and said he didn't want to see you ever again. Yes. We know he's got a skeleton in his cupboard and he said you reminded him of someone he'd rather forget. Yes. And he looked sad when you told him Miss Polly wanted him to know that it positively wasn't her sending him the cast foot jelly. I have a feeling you're going to tell me something. John Pendleton and Miss Polly were lovers. No. Old Tom once told me she had a lover, but I didn't believe it because she's such a cross old stick. Nancy. But now, that's why he travels abroad so much. To forget. Yes. Well, he may just like foreign food. No. Oh, at last. A romantic mystery. Perhaps they might fall in love again. Then you could all have a double wedding.
come on. By the shore of Gitchigumi, by the shining big sea water, at the doorway of his wigwam, in the pleasant summer morning, Hiawatha stood and waited. Darcy drew his chair a little towards her and said, You cannot have a right to such very strong local attachment. You cannot have always been at Longbourn. You may stop now, Pollyanna. I never thought being read to could be quite so exhausting. If I'm not better by this evening, I shall send for the doctor. Oh, good. I do like Dr Chilton. Dr Chilton isn't our family physician. Dr Warren is. If anyone comes, it'll be he. Oh, I was thinking, when Mr Pendleton's leg is mended a little more, that I might invite him round for a cake. Don't be ridiculous. He's an absurd man. Have you never got on with him? That really is none of your concern, Pollyanna. I don't get on with a lot of people. Have you never wanted to get married, Aunt Polly? The blacksmith, Mr Murphy, is awfully nice. Yes, I'm not sure Mrs Murphy's quite finished with him yet. Oh. How about Dr Chilton? Especially as he saw you that day with your hair looking lovely. Pollyanna, will you please stop this right now? I'm quite happy on my own, thank you. The summer's nearly over. Next week you will go to school. I think perhaps you need to be in the company of people your own age. Would you go to the house, please? Fetch me my telescope. Pollyanna. Yes? I won't see so much of you when you start going to school. No. Mm, that's a, it's a shame. I thought you didn't like having people visit you. Mm, that's it. Without you, I feel like... Would you come and share my house? I'd love to, but I can't. Why not? Because I want Polly's. You're no more hers. Would you come if she was happy to let you? But our Polly's been so good to me. Pollyanna, years ago, I loved somebody very much. I hoped one day that she would share my house. Well, she didn't. And since then, this great pile of stones has been a house, but not a home. It takes a, a woman's hand and heart. Or, or, or a child's presence to make a home. But if you still love Aunt Polly, why don't you just ask her to stay and be lovers again? Then the three of us can all live here together. Lovers? Your aunt and I? <laughs> Have we got that wrong? It was your mother, whom I loved, Pollyanna, your darling mother. But she didn't love me. And then, after a while, she went away with your father. Well, since then, <laughs> I've been a peevish old man. I've such a lot to share with you, but please be here with me. What about Aunt Polly? 
She doesn't deserve you. She doesn't know how to enjoy anything. Least of all, a, a spirit such as yours. I'll ask her. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Have a, have a cake. Not that one. It, it's my favourite. Jancy, the sky is rather threatening. Would you mind taking an umbrella and meeting Pollyanna? I'm concerned she may get rather wet. That's very, um, kind, Mum. Yes, well, she should be leaving Pendleton Hall shortly. Oh, so she's taking tea with Mr Pendleton? Mr Pendleton of Pendleton House? Are you completely yourself, Nancy? Yes, Mum. I was worried about you getting rained on, so she asked me to fetch you with this. I shouldn't worry. No! That's good. You should be glad she's worrying. That isn't how you play the glad game. No, it means there's a chance she's human after all. Hm. That's why I was going to ask you. Do you think Aunt Polly likes me living in her home? Do you know, I think she does. Now, it wasn't always that way. Would she be sad if I wasn't there anymore? Yes. She started to need you the way you needed her. Oh, I found out. And um, Polly and Mr Pendleton weren't lovers. What? Oh, but I had it all worked out. Why can't people behave like they do in books? <sighs> so, who was your Aunt Polly in love with? Good afternoon, Timothy. Um, I, I have a favour to ask, Mark. I was wondering if I might borrow the motor car. Oh, yes, of course. For four days. Oh, why? For our honeymoon. I was hoping I might surprise Nancy by taking her off on a driving holiday. <laughs> you imagine she might enjoy that, do you? Yes. Say no. I've got to, Mr. Pendleton. Truly, I have. Aunt Polly. Did she refused to let you come. I didn't ask her. Why not? I just know she cares for me. I can't leave her now. I understand. I won't ask again. But there is something wonderful you can do. You said only a woman's hand and heart to a child can make a home. Well, I know a child who needs a home. No. It's you I want, just as I wanted your mother. But you must listen. His name's Jimmy Bean. You'd never be lonely with Jimmy around. Perhaps. But I'd rather be lonely. Maybe you think a nice, live little boy wouldn't be as good as that old dead skeleton you keep. But I think it would. Skeleton? Yes, Nancy said you kept one in a cupboard somewhere. Hmm? <laughs> I'm sorry, Pollyanna. You should tell your Jimmy to come and see me, if only to say hello. And I promise I'll get rid of that horrible skeleton. Hello. Hello, Dr. Chilton. Come on. Snow asked me to fetch her medicine. Ah. I've never been to your home, Dr. Chilton. Oh, it's a pretty poor apology for a home. You sound like Mr. Pendleton. Perhaps you and he should live together. Not sure that would be as much fun as it sounds. Why haven't you married? I nearly did. Some years ago. Who? I don't really want to talk about it. Well, you should. It's bad to keep things to yourself. I haven't got any secrets. You will have. Actually, perhaps you won't. Don't have any. So what went wrong? 
We had an argument. It was unimportant in itself. We haven't spoken for 15 years now. She's a proud woman and I'm a proud man. Well, maybe not proud, tired. But you must be together. I would have liked us to have been, but people have to want to change and she finds change difficult. I thought Mr Pendleton and my Aunt Polly were lovers. Well, Nancy thought so first. She reads lots of books, but it turns out we made a mistake somewhere. Mm -hmm. What did Mr Pendleton say to that? He says he loved my mother. Oh, did you know I'm going to be Nancy's bridesmaid? Hooray. <sighs> it was I who loved your Aunt Polly. the other boys and girls that they should stop without me. Yes. Glad you belong to me, old Polly. Don't move her. She hurt bad. I don't know yet. Is, is she in pain? What do you think? I've always hated those evil smelling dangerous things. What's wrong with horses? That's what I want to know. Yes. Hello, Pollyanna. Hello. I'm Nurse Hunt. I've come to help your auntie out. You're in safe hands with Dr. Warren. I've seen him raise the dead and you can't say fairer than that. And the first thing I want you to do, my sweet, is swallow these little white pills. Will you do that for me? Goodbye, man. wrong with her? Dr. Warren is all at sea. He has arranged for a consultation with a specialist from London. But it appears at present there is paralysis from the waist down. How is Polly undertaking it? She knows she can't move her legs, but she thinks they are just broken. Makes me want to weep. You should know that I've been trying to persuade her to come and live with me with a view to legally adopting her. I care for her, for her own sake and her mother's. I can offer her my love. Can you? Yes, I can. How dare you think you can understand me? I understand you. 
A spinster with an overdeveloped sense of duty, reveling pointlessly in a status as village queen bee. As opposed to you? Realising too late in your life that it is empty and trying to fill it with someone else's child? I wanted Pollyanna to be my heir! She would have wanted for nothing. She wouldn't leave you. She said you'd been so good to her. And she knows you care for her. Thank you. Thank you for coming. This is for Pollyanna. Who would have thought it, eh? Mr Pendleton calling on Miss Polly. Why do they hate each other so much? Well, he blamed her for poisoning her sister's mind against him. And she blamed him for ruining her friendship with her sister by blaming her. There was a lot of blame about. Pollyanna, my dear, we've decided we want another doctor besides Dr. Warren to see you. Dr. Chilton? Oh, Aunt Polly, I'd love to have Dr. Chilton. No, I didn't mean Dr. Chilton. He's a special doctor who knows all about injuries like yours. Pollyanna, I would do anything for you. Please do not ask me to call Dr. Chilton. How's our poorly pumpkin pie? Oh, well, at least broken legs mend. Can bear to be a lifelong invalid like Mrs. Snow. like my doctor. Your doctor? Oh, that isn't my doctor. Dr Warren is Aunt Polly's doctor. Mine is Dr Chilton. <laughs> Dr Warren, the diagnosis is quite clear. There has been extensive damage to the nerves and, in my opinion, the damage is irreversible. You're saying she'll never walk again? Aunt Polly! Aunt Polly! Polly, what did you just say? I have to know what you just said. It's true, isn't it? It's true. Doctors are always making mistakes. How am I going to go to school? How am I going to go see Miss Snow or Mr Pendleton? How am I going to run along the beach and do the things that people do? Not be stared at and pitied and be stuck forever? Oh, Polly, Anna. I promise. Everything will look better in the morning. It is the morning! Father used to say that everything might be worse. But he'd never heard that he couldn't walk ever again. I don't see that there can be anything worse than that, can there? So, 
her condition is permanent. Yes, sir. Oh, poor little girl. Poor little girl. She can't think about anything else. Of course not. What's she supposed to do? Laugh it off? The worst thing is, she can't seem to play a game anymore. She can't find anything to be glad about. <sighs> Could I tell Pollyanna that you've seen Jimmy Bean again? You can. But it wouldn't be true. Oh. Many of you will have heard about young Pollyanna Whittier's tragic accident. The Lord moves in mysterious ways. And here, you may think, is the proof. She's a remarkable girl. But even the strongest spirits can crumble in the face of such a cruel blow. And she is, in the end, a child. A lovely child. Please spare a moment to pray that she may walk again. Let us pray. Hello. Hello, Tim. Have you, uh... Have you been avoiding me? Yes. Oh. I can't marry you, I'm sorry. Why not? Because every time I looked at you, Think of motor cars. Pollyanna's ruined life. Yeah, well, do people fall off horses too, you know? No! How did you get in? It wasn't locked. You aren't answering the door. We're not receiving visitors. It's too upsetting. I had to know how Pollyanna is. Dr. Mead has prescribed various treatments and medicines, but he holds out almost no hope for her. 
Will you tell Pollyanna that I've seen Jimmy Bean and he's going to be my son and heir? Please say, I, I hope it makes her glad. Pollyanna, I have a message for you from John Pendleton. He says to tell you that he's going to adopt Jimmy Bean. And he hopes you'll be glad to know it. Glad? Oh, yes. Now Mr Pendleton and Jimmy both have what they want. Mr Pendleton says a home needs the hand and heart of a woman or a child's presence. Oh, I see. Dr Chilton says so too. So I asked him why he didn't get them. A woman's hand and heart and have a home. Pollyanna. I wanted to know because he seemed so sad. And what did he say? He said he'd give all the world for one woman's hand, but sometimes you have to wait and wait until the person you love is ready. about your little girl. Thank you, she's much the same. You're not in bed. Just because I'm ill, it doesn't mean I can't get out of bed once in a while. Every 30 years. There seem to be lots of new buildings in the village. Anyway, we think it's so awful, so ghastly, that the little girl can't walk again and doesn't want to play the game ever again because she's so low that we wanted to tell her. Can we tell her? No. I'm afraid Pollyanna isn't ready to see anyone yet. Oh. Well, you'll have to do. Will you tell her what she's done for us, making us glad about small things and so on? Especially Mother, who used to lie in the dark, week in, week out, frightening everyone. Shall I just send her your best wishes? Yes, please. Yes. Will you give Pollyanna a message? Will you tell her that I've put on this? The little girl has tried for so long to make me wear some colour. You know I've worn black ever since my husband died 18 years ago. So I wanted her to know that I've begun. And I was having trouble with the ladies' aid, which wanted to switch Sunday school to a Tuesday, which somewhat defeats the point of a Sunday school. And I was sick at heart. So, I was composing an angry sermon denouncing everyone. When Pollyanna sat down with me and told me about the rejoicing texts, which is what her father used to call them, 800 or so verses in the Bible which begin, be glad and rejoice. Shout for joy! <laughs> Your girl used to walk past my house and sometimes come in and play with my little ones. Well, because she didn't know that her kind weren't supposed to call on my kind, except, of course, to uh, drop off old clothes and the odd Bible. And we've had a hard year, my George and me, but she always made us laugh. And, and she taught us the glad game. And, well, when we heard that she'd been fretting her life away, I wanted to tell her today that she should be glad, cos, well, me and George, we've decided to stick together. I will certainly tell her. Thank you for coming, Mrs Payson. <laughs> I prefer physical signs of affection to be kept embarrassed. Oh, never mind. 
Is this absurd game the whole village is babbling about? So, for example, I don't like Monday mornings. I've noticed. Oh. Well, anyhow, Pollyanna said I should be gladder on Monday mornings than any other day of the week because it'll be a whole week before I have another one. I wonder why Pollyanna didn't teach me the game. Because her father taught it her. And you wouldn't let her talk about her father. Even though he'd so recently passed away and she desperately needed to talk about him. That was wrong of you, you know. Yes, I can see that now. You are very much loved in the village, Pollyanna. Nancy taught me your beautiful game. I'm so happy. I really wanted you to play it more than anybody. I hope you don't raise this matter lightly, Chilton. Of course not. I do believe that Pollyanna's condition can be improved. At the moment, from all accounts, she's listless and getting weaker. What does this treatment involve? Stimulating the damaged nerves by a series of... Will this mean anything to you? No, not a thing. Well, it's a new treatment, and there is some risk of causing considerable pain and the risk of reawakening hopes in Pollyanna only to dash them again. What are you doing? Walking in... Sorry. You live here. Force of habit. Come in. You like the new trousers, Dr. Chilton? Yes. They're very nice. It's not everyone who can look good in tartan. You're a credit to your new father. Submit a child of yours to this treatment. Yes. It's not the worst thing being confined to a wheelchair, you know. It's only a chair. While there's still a chance that Pollyanna could walk again, surely we should take it. I need to see that child and examine her. <sighs> Has Polly Harrington replied to your letter? No. It was returned unopened. I suppose I could appeal to Dr. Warren directly. Yes, though I can't imagine him taking kindly to that. No, no. No, it's all a little awkward. You know what? If Pollyanna heard you say that, she'd sick up her lunch. Jimmy, go to your room. Which one? Any of them. She would, though. Why are you being so feeble? Who cares if it's awkward or the letter hasn't been opened? You think Pollyanna say, oh, no, I'd just rather stay here and get used to sitting? What happens when she finds out you didn't give her this chance? I'm here to see Pollyanna. to take her to meet a doctor I know who specialises in treating injuries like hers. He's a great friend of mine and I really think he can do something to help her. Yes, who knows, yes. If nothing good comes out of it, it will be sad and painful for Pollyanna, but... We two, in our dealings with each other, have been cripples. We're like two people who looked at a steep slope and decided to turn back, while others, like your sister, took a chance, ran down, and lived a rich life, however short. 
We should let Pollyanna have that opportunity. A day hasn't gone by when I haven't thought about you in this house, wondering what you were doing, what it'd be like to be here with you. Hoping you were happy, at the same time hoping you weren't. Let's end this sadness and waste and trust each other. What are you waiting for? Hilton, I've missed you so much. And I have you. I, uh, I sold the motor car. I made a bit of profit, you know, because I put her in tip-top condition and refurbished the gearbox with it. With... Well, never mind about that. Miss Polly's let me keep the difference. So I've bought you these. And this. Oh, I, I must have left it somewhere. But I, I think you'll like it. <laughs> I think you're right, you know, Nancy. The future isn't in motor cars. <laughs> I got that badly wrong. Horses, <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> Shall I stop talking? Yes. Shall we go in? Oh. I thought you weren't ready to travel. I couldn't miss this, could I? Oh. Oh. Poor 
sure Richard will think he's marrying some wild, blotchy animal. I won't go in. This is your moment. No, Pollyanna. This is our moment. 